This is where most startups fail. 80% of all startups never find a product market fit and die. Today we're gonna look at the five steps to a product market fit. You get this right and you might just make it. This is Raw Startup. I'm the founder of Vivino. We found a product market fit so strong that we're up to 50 million users now. Every day, two to three million wines are looked up on Vivino. That's what I call a product market fit, but it was not easy to find. We'll do a step-by-step -step guide to how to get a product market fit. We will look in detail to a perfect release cycle that'll take you to a solid product market fit. Finally, we'll look at how to identify the product market fit. How do we actually know that we have a product market fit? This is where most startups fail or win, so let's go and find that magical product market. Fit. Finding the product market fit for Vino was not easy. It took 18 months of hard work and grind. 18 months of little progress and flat numbers. Once you find it though, it's pretty damn awesome. Good. Let's take a look at the five steps to a product market fit. Number one, find problem solution and audience. We start by asking ourselves, what is the problem and what is the solution? If you can state that in a really, really simple way so that most people understand it, you've probably understood it pretty well. Here's an example. Problem. I don't know what wines are good and what wines are not so good. Solution. Build an app that tells the user what wines are good and what wines are not so good. If you have a hard time defining it, you probably want to narrow it down and define it a little bit sharper. Next thing is to find an audience you can talk to, an audience that has the problem and wants the solution. If you're part of that audience, that's very helpful. If the problem is not relevant to you, you have to find some people you can talk to about the problem and solution. People that have the problem and want the solution. There's no shortcut here. You have to understand the problem and solution and find that audience and define that audience so you can talk to them. And the audience can't be everyone. That never works. And please don't be that founder that thinks he's such a genius that he can invent problem and solution in his own head without talking to anybody. That happens all the time. Products come out that nobody wants. Before we move on, we wanna test the problem and the solution. Do that by looking at frequency and value. How often is the user gonna use the product and how much value does it give the user? In a perfect world, the user needs the product all the time and it solves a big, big problem. In the real world, that's really the case. But you do need either frequency or value to be high. If you have a product that's low frequency and low value, users just forget about it. They use it too infrequently and it really doesn't add any value, so they forget about it. Let's take a few examples. Let's start with Facebook. Frequency is high as users use it every day or every other day. However, value is actually low because it isn't like it solves a big problem. It's just a bit of entertainment. Now let's take a product like Uber. Most people don't use Uber every day, so you could say frequency is medium. But when it comes to value, when you really need a ride home, value is actually high. Finally, let's take a look at a product like Zillow, where you buy and sell real estate. People don't buy houses very often, so frequency is definitely low. But value, on the other hand, is very, very high. However, if you change the audience to actually being real estate agents that sell homes all the time, you can change the frequency to high, and now you have high on both of them. The point is, you can change the audience and suddenly you have high on both of them. So, define the problem solution fit and audience. Make sure either frequency or value are high, maybe even both of them. Number two, find a way to start building. We all have limited resources and we need to find a way to start building with the limited resources we have. And the answer to that is, please someone give me $20 million and I can start building. Wrong answer. You have to start building with the resources you have or have a really good plan on how you're gonna start building. If you can't do that, you have to go back to number one and find a solution that you can actually start building on. When you do this, ask yourself questions like this. Is the problem even solvable? What can we build with the research we have? Is the technology available? Can it even be built? How can you find the customers for this product? So basically, find a way to start building. You can't have a solution where you don't know how to start building. Even if you wanna build a rocket to go to the moon, you probably don't start with that rocket. You start with a smaller rocket to show people what you can build. Number three, build an MVP. Build a minimum viable product. You probably saw this coming. It's in the world. Build the smallest possible thing that's still viable, something that has some value to a few early adopters. You have to be really disciplined here. You must build the smallest possible thing. No fancy features here. Here are some quick tips when building an MVP. Define core features and stick to it. 
standard. Don't increase scope, just build the smallest possible thing. Build your MVP fast. Make sure you build it fast because if you don't do that, things will drift. You will start adding features. This is an MVP. Just get it done as spec and that's it. Get the MVP in front of customers as quickly as possible. Make sure these are real users or customers, not your friend. Find the people that are most desperate for the exact product. Hopefully someone is screaming for your product. Don't know any customers or users? Well, should you really be building something for a user or customer you don't know? Probably not. Forget your friends. They're not really going to use it. They will give you poor feedback. They will love the product because they love you. That just isn't useful when you're building an MVP. Friends and family are what keep dead products alive. You have to find real potential users for the product. Get feedback from a small relevant group. There's no point in having a big group as you test an MVP. It's all about having a small relevant group. Having too many people testing will just create noise and too much less usable feedback. This will be a very basic and not very pretty product. You need feedback from people that really understand that this is an MVP. We don't need to know that the icons are ugly. They're meant to be ugly. Now that's how you build an MVP. Number four, find the metrics for success. These are the numbers that show you progress on your product market fit journey. Let's talk about what you want to avoid here. Vanity metrics. Vanity metrics are numbers that you follow, but don't really get you closer to a product market fit. Numbers that sound and look great, but don't really get you any closer. An example of a vanity metric is downloads. Maybe it goes from 1,000 to 10,000. That doesn't mean that people use your product or that your product is any good. It could just be an article in a newspaper or some celebrity mentioned your product. It doesn't mean the product's any good. It doesn't mean that anybody's using it. We need to find the real numbers that truly tell you, are you getting closer to a product market fit? I also want to keep it simple. I don't want to track 10 numbers. So I want to boil it down to two numbers. Two numbers that tell you you're getting closer to a product market fit. The two numbers I want to monitor are retention and usage. Retention is about finding out if people keep using the product. There's no point in making a product that people use once and then throw away. To get actual growth, you need retention. It doesn't have to be a fancy number. Actually, active users can tell you the retention. At Davina, we used active users. MAU was the big number, monthly active users. In the early days, we actually also used weekly active users. So find a great number for retention. It could be active users. If you get a lot of new users, be a little bit careful with using active users because that can take your number up and down. Sometimes people exclude the new users and active users. That can give you a better picture of the actual retention. But the second number is usage. How much do people use the product when they use it? For Netflix, it could be minutes to watch per month. For a web shop, it could be orders per year. For Vivino, it was scans per month. Basically, usage is how much do our users use the product. So find a number for retention and find a number for usage. Those are the two numbers to tell us if we get closer to a product market fit. I have a full video about numbers you should track in a startup, so watch that sometime later. Some people might argue that you want to know how many new users come in at the MVP stage. I do think that's less important. It's more important to get a few users in every week or every month. Number five, build a fast and insanely awesome release cycle. Yes, I said insanely awesome, and I mean it because this is the key to success. You have to build an insanely awesome release cycle, nothing less than that. This is about improving the product fast. We'll talk about speed in a second, but let's first look at what's in the release cycle. So here comes the release cycle. It's seven steps, which sounds like a lot and they're all important, but most of them are really fast, so it's all pretty simple. Before you start, make sure you enjoy this. This can be a lot of fun and you will miss it later. Building a product fast, releasing fast, is just a lot of fun. It's a grind and it's tough, but very, very enjoyable. At some point later, you'll probably miss how quickly you could release in the early days. There are other things you won't miss, but you will miss the speed. So enjoy it. Okay, here we go. First step, brainstorm. Look at the feedback. Throw all the ideas on a whiteboard, listen to the team, listen to the users, and get all the ideas up there. This is not several days. This is one hour in front of a whiteboard. Make sure you engage the entire team so they feel every idea is listened to. You can't build every idea, but you can listen to every idea. Keep them coming, keep them in there, and the team members that came up with the idea will feel appreciated even though it isn't built. Next is shirt size. Not all ideas are equal. Some ideas take a lot of work and others are an easy fix. Shirt sizing means estimating how much work it is to build a feature. Keep it simple, use three levels, small, medium, large. And make sure you actually use the scale. Not everything is large, then you're not really using the scale. Next, you prioritize and decide. Make sure you know exactly what metric you're trying to improve and keep asking yourself, will this feature improve that metric? Now take the brainstorm and the shirt sizes and decide what you wanna build. 
Next is to spec it. No, you can't skip it. You have to do proper specification on what you're building so the team understands exactly what's being built. Again, no skipping this step, it's important. Now to the fun part, build it. Hopefully this is where you spend most of your time actually building the feature. Don't let feature creep in, stick to the specifications. Next, release it. Get it out there and tell all your users. Finally, we have the post-mortem. How was the feature received? Do the users use it? Did it actually improve the numbers we wanted it to? In the early days of Vivino, we did a weekly release cycle. We released every Friday. Today, it's a little bit slower. We really try and keep it fast. Now to the most important thing with the cycle, the speed. Do it as fast as you can. The faster you can learn from your users and build that and go again, the more likely you are to succeed. That's it with the cycle. Keep going and running through it as fast as you can. In a second, we'll talk about how to see the product market fit, but remember, the ones that can build a great product the fastest will probably win, and the key is in that release cycle. Now that's the full list, but the crucial next step is finding out if you have a product market fit or not. So let's look into that. There are hints of a product market fit. For instance, if users keep using a flawed product, that can be a sign of product market fit. Let's say the product is a little bit broken, but the users keep using it. It means they like and want the product so much, they can live with the bugs. An example was early days Instagram. They were known to crash very often and the servers went down, but the users stayed with Instagram because they loved Instagram. We had the same thing with Vivino. The product really wasn't that good. It wasn't very good at its core feature, but people kept using it, believing that the bugs and flaws would be fixed over time, which obviously it did. Now let's go to a pretty certain way to identify product market fit. More and more users use the product more and more. This means going back to the users we were tracking earlier, retention and usage. This basically means that both numbers are going up. More and more users are using the product more and more. For Vivino, that meant more and more active users scanned more and more wines. We had a clear indication of product market fit. One thing you have to be careful with is if you have a lot of new users come in, they can distort your active user numbers and it looks like you have a lot of active users. New users that use a product for a short time, that's not a product market fit. Finally, on identifying product market fit, I will tell a story from earlier. So when my wife was pregnant with our first baby, we went to the doctor and said, hey, how do we know when she's going into labor? The doctor was short and precise and said, when it's there, you know it. It's the same thing with product market fit. Once it's there, you know it. If you're in doubt, if you have a product market fit, you probably don't have it. I tell you, when you saw it, Vivino, we had no doubt at all. This was a true product market fit. If you want more content just like this one, please consider pressing like and subscribe so you get all the future videos. Thank you very much for watching. Now stop watching and go build something.